So I've been using Linux since 2006 or something. And recent years have been the smoothest sailing on Linux I've ever had. Once you tend to pick a distro and configure it to your liking, you tend to notice that things just work. But like with every other operating system and every other electronic device, you will at some point encounter problems. And I would be lying if I told you that I never have any issues on any of my Linux systems. So today I thought it would be fun to go through a bunch of issues that I've experienced over the past year and a half, maybe two years or so while using Linux on various devices. But it's also time to talk about our sponsor. So this video is sponsored by Chasm. They are a great project for performing secure online research or just experimenting with a lot of things. They give you a complete platform to deploy Linux desktops or Windows and even applications in the cloud in as many workspaces as you want. And you can then access all of these desktops and browsers from any web browser. You can self-host all of this or you can access it through their software as a service subscription. They just released version 1.16, which adds managed egress providers. This new capability gives you an easy and flexible way to attach cloud browsers and web desktop workspaces to OpenVPN or to WireGuard-based VPNs. This allows you to browse the web and to run your desktops and apps in the cloud privately and anonymously. So the Chasm Workspaces Community Edition can be self-hosted, so you can run everything in your own personal infrastructure, or they have a subscription service, a software as a service subscription that lets you run using their cloud. All the links are as usual in the description of the video. Okay, so my first problem has been with audio on Linux. As you might guess, I do a lot of audio recording on here. I record audio for all these videos. I record audio for all of my podcasts and it's a lot of audio based work. I also now have started another channel about Warhammer 40k, but basically everything that I do podcast, daily news show for Patreons and YouTube members, all the videos that I do, the Patreon cast that I do weekly for all my members, the audio, a weekly news show. I have a lot of stuff that I do with audio. And generally, audio on Linux works fine. Uh, I use an Ubuntu-based distro that has switched to Pipewire a while back. Pipewire works fine. But I also do have a hybrid laptop with NVIDIA and Intel, and it seems to have issues sometimes detecting which audio card it should use when you're plugged through HDMI through the NVIDIA GPU or when you're plugged through USB-C to the Intel GPU. So basically what I've noticed is that taking a look at the audio, now it looks very clean, but that's because I completely turned off the HDA NVIDIA audio. If I turn this on, it's gonna wreck every single setting in there and also completely bork my current recording, so I'm not gonna do that. And as long as I leave this thing off, I don't have any issues. But as soon as I turn it on, I have problems all the time with this output not being correctly set, with these microphones not being correctly set, and more importantly, these microphones resetting their levels to 100% all the time every time I open Audacity, which is very, very annoying because you start recording, you see the audio peaks and crackles and just breaks everything down. It's just impossible to use. And if you're not careful, you've just wasted all your recording time for no reason. Now, I do not know why enabling or disabling this NVIDIA Pro Audio does anything. I don't even know which output it's trying to link to. What I know is it should be disabled. It should probably not be displayed. And also this is a KDE related gripe, but why do I have all of these profiles for everything? A lot of those do not apply to any of the hardware that I have. I know my hardware can be detected. Why do I have all these profiles for all my microphones? These shouldn't be here. These shouldn't exist. My setup is extremely simple. All I have is a laptop plugged into this LG monitor. I even disabled the built-in screen. It is not enabled. I only use the ultra-wide LG. I'm plugged through it through HDMI and speakers are plugged through uh, the HDMI display uh, with just a basic audio jack. So when I plug in my HDMI cable, the only thing that I really want 
is to have all the audio routed through the HDMI cable automatically and then through my speakers. That happens 99% of the time, but sometimes after you reboot, you will have to reset something in there because it's been reinitialized by something. Audio on Linux, tricksy beast, there's probably something I should do somewhere to fix that, but honestly, it sort of fixed itself, and now I just do not want to touch anything. I just disabled that NVIDIA Pro Audio, and I'm just crossing my fingers for nothing to break again, and that's not really how you should use your computers. I'm sure there's an explanation somewhere, but I couldn't find it, and so for now it works, and I'm just praying and hoping it keeps working. Now, the second problem I faced is my keyboard. I use this keyboard. I didn't clean it before recording this video, so hopefully it doesn't look too dirty. But you might see it is a macOS keyboard layout. Hey, don't judge me. I just think the macOS layout is better suited to writing French. Like, a lot of special characters are actually better placed on a Mac keyboard than on a regular Azerty French keyboard that is not a Mac layout. It's not my fault. It works well. But I had two problems with that. First, my laptop itself is not a Mac, so it doesn't have a Mac keyboard layout. Uh, it uses the generic, normal French Azure T layout. But the Mac layout is different. You don't have the keys placed on the same places. Notably this, much easier to do an at and to do a hashtag symbol. It's also easier to do a bunch of uh, weird special characters. I just kind of like it. I know that for developers, it's kind of annoying to have the brackets kind of hidden. You don't even see them on the keys. Uh, really annoying. But I'm not a developer, so I don't care. The main problem is I needed to change between keyboard uh, layouts. That was a very easy thing to do. All I had to do is have a, a change layout shortcut, and that's it. Now, where the real problem lay is that this Bluetooth keyboard did not work properly using the right keys for the layout that is actually printed on the keys. For example, pushing this key would give me this result. And putting, pressing this key would give me that result. This, these two were completely inverted. Don't ask me why, that's how it was. And I found my solution for this in the Arch wiki of all things. I do not run Arch, mind you, I run Tuxedo OS, which is a Ubuntu-based distro, but the Arch wiki is still an absolute gold mine of fixes and things that will work on a lot of distributions. It will explain to you a lot of subsystems, and it will also give you a bunch of answers for issues and problems you might face. So this one I could fix by typing a few command lines. This was what I had to type. So it's sudo echo options hid underscore apple iso underscore layout equals one in the slash etc slash mode probe dot d slash hid underscore apple dot conf. It basically tells uh, the system that I was using an iso layout for my keyboard, not an ANSI layout, and it matches the keys properly. I don't know why it doesn't detect it by default, but that wasn't all, because apparently once you've done that, you also need to update the init RAM FS, which I had to do with this specific command, uh, sudo update dash init RAM FS dash u dash k all, and this regenerated the parameters for booting the system, and this took this uh, change into account with every reboot, which fortunately solved the problem. No idea why it's needed, it should detect that layout automatically, it does detect that my keyboard is an ISO French layout on my laptop, so why doesn't it with the Bluetooth keyboard? No idea. There's also sometimes an issue with Bluetooth, where when I turn on my computer, it will not automatically reconnect to my Bluetooth keyboard uh, until I turn the keyboard off and then on again, and then it will repair and reconnect. Very rare, but it happens sometimes. Now, I also sometimes have an issue running Flatpak apps. Uh, for example, I use regularly Parabolic uh, to download my own videos from my own channel in a format uh, that Tilvids or Peertube can accept and render, uh, because uh, apparently DaVinci Resolve cannot export in any format that Tilvids uses. This is run as a Flatpak. I use a lot of Flatpaks, basically everything that I use on the day-to-day -day basis 
is Flatpak OBS to record all my videos. That's Flatpak, the Heroic Games Launcher, Flatpak, uh, Game Flatpak, my web browser, uh, Florp, Flatpak, Discord, used as a Flatpak, Boxes, all my notes app, Steam, Thunderbird, everything that I really use every day and some stuff that I don't use anymore that I just install for testing. All of it is Flatpaks. And sometimes these Flatpaks just refuse to open flat out. And this is apparently linked to an issue with the new GTK renderer that has been implemented recently in GTK. It is apparently kind of incompatible with the NVIDIA drivers when you're using the Vulkan backend, and so some applications will require you to change the GTK backend. How do you do that, you might ask? Well, it's easy. You create a file called gsk.conf in your .config slash environment.d folder, and you type in gsk render equals gl to use normal OpenGL rendering instead of Vulkan. This does result in some applications looking borked, uh, where you're going to have a mouse cursor that looks not right over your Flatpak app, or sometimes fractional scaling not being respected, uh, but it's not a big, big problem. A pain point for sure it's nvidia stuff it's nvidia's fault as always basically when something graphical is not well supported or doesn't work on linux and you have an nvidia gpu it's generally nvidia's fault it's minor problems but it's still problem another problem i have is with app images i don't use app images a lot i only do so with applications that at the time I installed them at least, did not have any other version. This is any type, and this used to be Balena Etcher, but uh, this app image just simply doesn't work anymore. You double click it, it doesn't open, uh, even though it has permissions. And when it opens, it fails to burn anything. So why don't I delete it? Because it sucks. AnyType is a great program, it generally works really well, except every time there is an update available to this thing, I click update, I type in my password, and then it updates, but it removes my launcher in my taskbar. Every freaking time it breaks the integration with my taskbar after reboot, this thing doesn't work, can't reopen the program, it just doesn't function. Doesn't open. Doesn't work. So, once the launcher is gone, I have to go find back my any type, I have to pin it to the task manager again, I have to put it in place again, and I have to reopen it to check if it actually opens or not, which sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does. Fun. I mean, it's sort of ironic because I just talked about problems with flat packs as well, but they're not issues with flat pack, they're issues with Nvidia, so yeah. Another issue that I faced recently is with my webcam. I have a Logitech, Brio, 4K, whatever else. I always thought that Linux could not work with this webcam properly because it's supposed to go up to 4K 30fps or 1080p 60fps, except I never could manage it to get higher than 1080p 30 because I just plugged it into my USB hub, plugged that USB hub into my laptop, so I could just plug it, unplug it all at once when I need to move my laptop around. Turns out that was a mistake. The only way to get all the resolutions and all the frame rates for this webcam is to plug it directly into its own USB port into the laptop. Even using the USB hub and just the webcam plugged in, so there's no other bandwidth issue through this single USB port, that doesn't work. It needs to be plugged in directly into the laptop or it doesn't work with all the modes, at least not on my computer. That was a discovery after, I think, two years of owning this webcam when I tried to record using it. In the end, I don't use it. I record using a cam link uh, from Elgato because that allows me to use my DSLR, which is much better. But uh, yeah, that was uh, a weird thing to discover. And my last problem is with Linux gaming, specifically with games losing compatibility after they've had it to begin with. Recently, my experience with that has been with Space Marine 2. I only gamed on Linux before Space Marine 2, and I started playing the game on Linux. I just played the campaign solo on Linux, uh, running, uh, I think it was uh, Nobara. Yeah, it was Nobara on my gaming PC. I finished the campaign. I started playing with my friends. I went up to level 20 or something. And then, big patch to the game, and no longer works with Linux because they changed something with anti-cheat. How long did they take to fix that? About a month. Uh, yeah, so 
In the meantime, my friends were playing, I was not because I couldn't, so I used my Windows partition to game because I did not want to be left behind and I wanted to be able to play with my friends and I did well because if I had waited, now everyone has moved on from that game in my circle of friends, so I would have been willing to play that game with them, but they would not have been available to play it with me because they were bored of it by the time they actually fixed it on Linux. That's a real problem. It's not the first time this has happened and it's a big, big annoyance. Anyway, these were my main issues with Linux, my gripes, my little problems here and there. None of these make my experience with Linux unsuitable. When a program stops working for some reason, I install it in another source and generally it fixes the problem. Put back to back, these problems end up being sort of annoying. It sort of collates into an experience that isn't as smooth as you'd love to. And I thought it was interesting to share it because yes, I love Linux. Yes, I think it is the best operating system for most people out there, but it doesn't mean it's perfect and there are issues even on hardware that is meant to run Linux, some third-party peripherals and some other things that you add on top of it just don't always work as you would want them to. Now, of course, to minimize these problems, we have today's sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They won't make all your hardware troubles go away, but they will definitely limit them to the maximum because at least the device you're using works properly with Linux. All the hardware that they sell is specifically picked to run well with Linux. They even develop drivers to make sure that things go smoothly. They have a big range of computers from laptops to desktops to workstations, gaming stuff, or just day-to-day -day office life laptops. You have a lot of choices. I only use their computers nowadays. This entire channel, all my podcasts, everything is run on one of their laptops, which works really fantastically as long as I don't try to add some unsupported or not well-supported peripherals like this keyboard. And all my gaming is done on one of their computers where the issues I faced are linked to a developer, not to the hardware itself. So if you need a new computer, you want to support Linux, you want to run Linux on it, you want to support a company that actively contributes to Linux development, click the link in the description below and check out Tuxedo Computers. They're really, really solid. Anyway, this will conclude today's video. I hope you enjoyed this little trek through the issues that I faced. I just did not want to give you the impression that everything was absolutely perfect all the time because, of course, it's not. So, you know where the usual YouTube buttons are? Click them to help this video uh, go up in the algorithm. Click them to help this channel grow. And if you really enjoy the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to support it financially. And you get a lot of cool perks for, honestly, not that much money per month. It's one dollar or euro. It's pretty neat. So, thank you all for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.